With Creo Simulate 3.0, the visual representation of shells, beams, and fasteners have been enhanced, providing users additional control to display the elements as shaded, transparent, or wireframe. This control allows users to have a better understanding of each element, including their shape, location, and size. We'll go through three examples and illustrate the new capability. On my screen is a model of an aircraft wing. All the geometry is created as surface geometry. In order to properly analyze the model, I will need to create some shell idealizations. Up in the Refine Model tab, let's click on Shell. In this case, I'm going to create an advanced shell. I'm going to choose my shell properties, the specific material, then simply go select the geometry. As soon as I create the geometry, immediately the shell is presented, and if you notice, it is actually shown as solid. As mentioned before, we can now control the display of shells as wireframe, transparent, or solid. This is controlled through the Simulation Display dialog. Once open, you'll see some additional capabilities under the Settings tab, in particular for shells. If I click the pull-down menu, you'll notice that now I can define it as Default as Shaded, Transparent, or Wireframe. One of the other benefits of the new shell display capability is that if I hold my mouse over the actual geometry, it will show me a prompt indicating the overall thickness of the shell. In this case, my shell is 0.1 inches thick. This will help users understand the particular shells and their size in their given model. Let's look at the next example. On the screen is a sketched entity representing a frame structure. Let's go ahead and create our beam idealization, which is available under the Refine Models idealization group. With the dialog open, we can simply go ahead and select one of the defined curves. It will capture all the curves and add it to the reference collector. Let's go define our material as stainless steel. At this point, let's go ahead and click on OK. Once again, we can click on the simulation display and control the beam display preferences under settings. Again, I have wireframe, shaded, and transparent. Let's go click it as shaded and click on OK. Now that the display of the beam is available, we get a better sense of understanding the type of beam cross-section we've selected and its overall location in our model. The last example, we'll look at fasteners. Let's go ahead and click on refine model. And now what I want to click on is fasteners under the connections group. Once again, we have the fastener dialog box up here, where we can now choose the different type of fasteners we want, either as a bolt or a screw. In our case, we'll use a bolt. Now we need to select the geometric references to place the bolt. In this case, I want to select this edge of this hole of the frame part, and then the complementary edge of the back head part to place the bolt. As you can see, the bolt is automatically created and shown on our model. Like with the beam and the shell, we can control the display of the fastener through the simulation display dialog. Beside Fastener, we now have a pull-down menu where we can control it as wireframe, shaded, or transparent. As I mentioned before, the default in previous releases was always wireframe. Now we have the control to also show it as shaded. This display enhancement of beams, shells, and fasteners will drastically improve a user's ability to understand the given elements placed in their model, their location, their shape, and their size.